How's it going everyone? Mask here, back with some Eve Echoes, and today we're going to be looking at the other half of that massive patch we got yesterday, specifically the ship adjustments. Because you might kind of take a closer look at maybe considering jumping into a ship you may not have before, or did your ship get nerfed and you're kind of thinking of reskilling? We're going to check that out, but first don't forget, uh, join my Discord for a 500 mil isk giveaway and get in on the conversation about fitting. There's a lot of refitting to do. It's really easy. That's discord.gg slash TV, and you can't miss the giveaway section. Just react, uh, react on it. Uh, for the Balgorn, each level of advanced large beam laser operation now increases large beam laser damage by 18% instead of 15. Uh, so just take a look at other things with lasers on it. You're looking at it's got a lot of Nosferatu uh, modifiers. We got your Webifier optimal range, large laser damage. Got a boost right here. It already has decent tracking speed. Uh, it's an okay buff. This isn't an all-out offensive ship. The Valgorn has a ton of um, of uh, your E War modifications to it, so it's not. I don't think it's going to really push it into being overpowered. The Nightmare, each level of advanced large beam laser operation now increases large beam laser damage by 12% instead of 10. I mean, I don't even got to pull it up, but you're buffing your nightmare damage, your, the nightmare damage by as much as uh, 12 to 2% isn't going to make or break anyone. It just means that you can kind of use the ship a little f more freely for other things. It'll help you with solo ratting anomalies in a nightmare because it's so tanky you can pull that off. <laughs> for the Vindicator, each level of advanced large railgun operation now increases large railgun damage by 14. So the Vindicator got a 2% buff as well. Uh, that's a ship where you're really going to start feeling it. We have our Vindicator. We already have large railgun damage. Actually, it, it is a lot about Webifier as well with the Vindicator. Uh, it is, it's only the one section with modifiers on damage or, or even the weapon type at all, which, uh, which is nice. For Rattlesnake, each level of advanced large drone operation increases large drone damage by 12% instead of 10. Each level of advanced battleship command increases missile damage by 12 slash 12 instead of 10 slash 10. Seems like it got more buffs, but keep in mind the Rattlesnake struggles with having to split its damage between two different skills, uh, missiles and drones, which really, it, it really struggles you to like be able to fully take advantage of that ship. So you have your drone damage, your missile damage, it's just the two, and because... Uh, I'm actually really not a fan of the Rattlesnake because of this. It's got two offensive uh, skills to focus on here, but because it's split between two damage types, it's really just one skill. They just had to put two on there because there's two different types of main damage coming from this ship. Uh, let's see what we have here next. We have the increase the shield, armor, and hull of all Blood Raider, Angel, Serpentis, Sancha, and Garissa ships by 10%. Reduce the power crit required by all large remote armor repairs by roughly 20%. Large remote armor repairs, okay, power grid. Increase the base velocity of all destroyers, or sorry, yep, all destroyers. Slightly reduce the capacitor of the Dominix. So the Dominix nerf, the Dominix nerf from the test server did not go live, which a lot of people will be happy to see. They were going to really, really gut, I think they were dropping the, D the DPS by as much as 25%. I think this might have been 35 per tier. A lot of people didn't like that, so it's nice to see that it didn't stick. We have all ships' shield, armor, and structure have been increased by 5%. So more tankiness right across the board. A lot of damage buffs coming out across the board too, though. So that kind of evens, evens each other out. Reduced the number of weapon slots of all heavy interdictors. Added one mid slot. Boosted shields, armor, and structure by 5.88%. Increased flight velocity by 7.14. And reduced signature radius by 4.25%. A lot of people don't like this. This change. Uh, it's gutted the DPS ability of, a, of interdictors. But the big thing is, you now aren't going to have a solo interdictor be able to get as many, get, get many kills, let's say, or as many kills totally by himself trying to do a gate camp. This isn't, this isn't actually a change I mind too, too much. Is I feel like dictors should be, a, they have a specific purpose. They're there to bubble fleets, shut down warps. It's it's a, it's tough because solo di playing as a solo dictor is a lot of fun. And they have taken that content and basically destroyed it. So it's, I, I see both sides of the picture here. You're you're taking away some some ways of people like having fun. Now you're gonna, you're forced more into group play with your interdictors. So you're going to have to party up and uh, and try to have fun that way. All light interdictors now have two high slots instead of four. So these are also getting 
basically your DPS cut in half with the, uh, the similar boots, boot buffs across the board. Basically, interdictors are, are not no longer really a solo ship at all. Sniper destroyers at tech level six now have two mid slots instead of three and four low slots instead of three. So sniper destroyers got a big nerf there. Assault destroyers have three and assault destroyers got a buff in the high slots. Sorry, three mid slots instead of two and three lows. And there's no time where you're going to trade a mid slot for a low slot. You're going to always want to pump as many lows as you got. They're either DPS buff or tank buff. You, you can't beat that. Boosted shield armor and structure of all destroyers by 4.55 and increased flight velocity by 15. I don't understand how you don't sort your patch notes. I, I, I rant about this all the time, but increase the base velocity of all destroyers. Boosted shield armor structure and increased flight velocity of all destroyers <laughs> okay purifier 2 manticore 2 nemesis 2 hound 2 now have four high slots instead of three buffs across the board on those eight new frigates the heron explorer the probe explorer magnate explorer amicus explorer manticore 3 hound 3 purifier 3 and the nemesis 3 these are all going to be um mostly falling under the tier 10 category i know of some of the new ships being added into the game we can't our, uh, reverse engineer the blueprints for and, and yet and therefore we cannot build them. That's a problem at the moment. Eight new destroyers, the Cormorant 3, Thrasher 3, Courser 3, all of these other ship 3s and or 2s. I'm not going to just blab my way through all these names. Mostly they've added the tier 10 ships to the game that are basically just scaling up from where we are currently with anything available at T9. We're still looking like two and a half months away from hitting tier 10 for anybody so they're really not gonna that's they're really really not important parts of the patch notes yet six new battleships the maelstrom the tempest 2 typhoon 2 dominix 2 these are also new tier 10 ships two new ore ships we have the venture 4 and the covered 2 also tier 10 nine ships have been removed the Co coercer covert ops the catalyst covert ops cormorant covert ops thrasher covert ops ferox 2 guardian prophecy 2 guardian Myrmidon 2 Guardian, Cyclone 2 Guardian. Interesting. They got rid of the Tier 10 Guardians. Huh. That might make me uh, invest a little more into my Cyclone Guardian, uh, knowing that it's not going to get phased out potentially too soon, because I don't see many great other Tier 10 options. Uh, even the Ferox 2 Guardian is listed here. I'm trying to think of other things. With the freighters been added to the game, we've got the Providence, the Fenrir, the, Sha the Sharon, and the Obelisk. My apologies if I'm not pronouncing some of those correct. Um, obviously, your freighters are the first capital ships, so we have you have to work together with friends to build those capital parts and then put them together into a freighter. Added four new command destroyers. Dragoon Command, Korax Command, Algos Command, and Talwar Command. Added four Tier 9 Command Battle Cruisers. The Prophecy Command, the Ferox Command, the Myrmidon Command, and Cyclone Command. Now... None of these ships can be built yet. That's one of the big problems. I'm not sure if they, they may have fixed that with a patch this morning. I haven't confirmed. There was a patch I downloaded before I logged in, but they were not able to be reverse engineered as of yesterday. For 4-4 four, 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 Interceptor... For 4 Interceptor 2 frigates... 4-4. Uh, four, four. I think we added 4 new Interceptor 2 frigates. <laughs> okay, advanced electronic warfare now increases warp scramblers slash warp disruptors optimal range by 6% per level instead of 5%. Whew. Okay, anytime you increase scram slash uh, disrupt optimal range, you are really changing combat in this game. Uh, command now increases weapon damage by 17.5% instead of 15. Four tier 10 interceptor cruisers. Mauler, Moa, Rupture, Thorax. Advanced propulsion jamming now increases effect radius of warp disruption field by 10% instead of 5. All right, so they so they nerfed the warp disruption fields. Now they're giving them a little little bit of a buff now, bringing it back. Uh for typhoon each level of or typhoon, each level of large missile torpedo operation now increases large missile torpedo explosion velocity by 7.5 instead of 5. Cool. <clears throat> so this is for four tier 10 interceptor cruisers, for four interceptor 2 frigates. Just such a weird way of uh, of writing that. Um, for Raven Striker, each level of advanced large missile torpedo operation now increases large missile damage by six. A little bit of a buff to the Raven Striker. Apocalypse Striker is getting a similar damage buff. Uh, actually, it's getting laser damage tracking velocity bonus. That's that's better. When they start upping 
not just pure damage and you're getting tracking increase you you really start to the damage bonus starts to scale better the bonus skill for hyperion has been changed from large railgun operation so advanced large railgun operations slash advanced Ooh, okay that's that's technically it's not really a nerf but it's a nerf to being able to run the ship very freely and not having to invest too far in the skill points and swap to it and still be very good without fully committing uh, each level advanced. Yep, the bonus skill for the rock rogue change from large railgun operation to advanced. So they're they're basically making these ships harder to skill into. It's a nerf for the ship's a universality or like ability to to easily be be run by a lot of people. Versatility, kind of. Uh, we have large railgun operation and optimal range patrol by five percent. <clears throat> and ship ship resistances okay hold on uh da, 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 da. each level of advanced large railgun operation increases large railgun damage by 10 percent and optimal range by 12.5 each level of advanced advanced battleship command increases ship shield resistance by four percent that is nice that's a 20 percent shield resist boost uh for the rogue that's some big buffs to the rogue actually the bonus skill for the abaddon has been changed from large beam uh, the Abaddon's also getting the same scaling shield resistance and optimal range. Exact same buffs, actually. Maelstrom now has one more mid slot. The bonus skill is switching to the advanced tiers. And we are getting Battleship increases repairing amount of repair by 7.5%. So boost amount. The Maelstrom's getting a boost amount buff. That's interesting. That makes the ship very self-boost reliant in order to take advantage of that. Uh, I'd rather see... A re uh, resist buff is much better because then it that that helps your logi heal you by having higher resists therefore a higher effective hp mul mul multiplier module adjustments all beam lasers and railguns deal about 10 percent more damage straight up just hey beams and rails buff missiles cannons and decomposers buff four percent reduce the explosion velocity of all large rapid missiles from 81 to 70. i don't remember how the math on that works and whether this is a buff or a nerf um if you do know please let me know in the comments down below added hybrid weapon rigs and structure rigs to Garista, the garista's inquisitor hybrid weapon and structure to the garista's i think they also added navigation rigs to the garista's and that was listed way up here the engineering rigs so yeah the garista's inquisitor got the engineering rigs now we're seeing uh, structure and hybrid weapons also. Navigation rigs and structure rigs are going to Sancha. Missile rigs to Angel. And remove navigation rigs from Angel. That is some crazy stuff when they start shuffling loot around like that. It's going to be interesting just how the, profit, the real profitability swings happen here. I'll tell you, navigation rigs are worth a lot. So that's a minus. That's a nerf to Angel space and a buff to both Garistas and Sancha. And Angel already had the cheapest d uh, faction debris in the game. So not looking too hot for Angel or Angel Space right now. Power grid and capacitor consumption slightly increased based on modules meta level. Adaptive armor hardener effect plus 33%. Reactive armor hardener effect plus 6.25%. So big armor buffs across the board. We're finally trying, trying to bring armor into the game. It's been kind of a joke up until now. Efficiency of all armor repairs, remote armor repairs, and group armor repairs has increased by 10%. Right across the board, more armor buff. Power grid requirement by group shield boosters, group armor boosters, blah, 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 blah. Thank you. This should have been a week one patch. Group shield boosters, large group shield boosters were so overpowered. Interceptors could run one of them on each ship. Two of them on each ship. Who cares? They had so many mid slots. It didn't matter. Turn them all on. And if you were smart enough to incrementally offset them, so it's over the 20 seconds, you could have a fleet. You could have a squad of interceptors. Technically, they could have 30 large group shield boosters and you could have them activating one, 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 one. But there's a, a fuel limitation. So I guess you'd want to go maybe 10. But still, you could have a group shield boost every two seconds. You literally like... If, they're, if the, the Interceptor is trying to speed tank you, they're just going to instant full heal after every tick of damage you got on them. You finally are not going to be able... So large group shield boosters are going... They're going from the one 
literal one power grid they used to take. And now we're going to see large. The mediums are now going to be... We, actually, we only have the MK7 and 9s in the game. They are, they've been popped up to 52. Respectable. It's not zero. But the larges, which were one before, are now 562. So you're not fitting those comfortably on many builds in the game now, which is fantastic. Really going to be on like battle cruisers, battleships, like taking up most of the power grid on a cruiser and forget about it underneath that. Uh, so much less abuse is going to be put on them in the game. They've been basically gutted at this point, which I enjoy. I had them in so many of my builds because they were just so busted and so strong. You did not have a choice. We've got all three, the skirmish, the armored command and the shield command bursts added to the game now, which you can find at the bottom of the mid slot page. Your shield command, of course. Uh, uh, shields, shield, res uh, remote capacitor booster, capacitor need. It's just a shield booster capacitor, remote shield booster. So it lowers the capacitor requirement. A little bit of a shield buff, resistance buff. Just a nice little AoE buff for the fleet. A lot of these modifiers, one simultaneous activa activation, one simultaneous module only available within fleet which this boolean actually means it only affects members within your own fleet so we have the shields we have an armor version and of course we have the skirmish version which is going to be afterburner bonus warp drive bonus disruptor range scram range web range signature radius inertia modifier a bunch of crazy cool stuff you had the skirmish to kind of get your fleet on top of another fleet and then you go big with the either the shield or the armor, depending on how you're fit, and try to just take that fight. Reduce the shield resistance bonus of the shield field modules. So we, they've nerfed the shield field modules. The signature radius for activating them increased from 500 to 500 or to 5,000 percent. Nobody cares about the signature radius. If you're running a bubble, everything should just be smacking you anyway. But realistic, realistically, that's a good change. It's how it should be. You put the bubble up, you are now massive. Yes, your signature radius should be like 10 times. Due to reworking of T10 ships, following changes have been made to skins. Um, Maelstrom are now Maelstrom Striker. Ah, we don't need to read the skin, the skin changes. They've changed some skin names. Uh, some have become invalid, cannot be activated or traded. We will refund players the corresponding amount of Plex. Prophecy 2 Guardian, Ferox 2 Guardian. Damn, Rosehorn, Prophecy 2s. That's pretty crazy, actually. I got a lot of boxes, huh? Interesting. You could you could roll your way into a lot of these without spending plex. I that interesting. Corresponding amount of plex. I wonder if you already had to have them activated. That ah, damn. I th I think I had a the I I probably had ten to fifteen day versions of a lot of these, but I wonder how they handled that. Added new skin effect for Sepentas pirates. Angel Pirates, Blood Raider Pirates, Sancho Pirates, and Garistos Pirates. Has anyone ever observed the Pirates and seen what they looked like? I, for one, have not. But now I will, and I won't know what the new skin looks like. Interesting. Fix an issue where some corporations couldn't receive notices from their alliance? Well, that would have sucked. Adjusted the turret hard point of stealth. Adjusted the turret hard point of stealth bombers and fixed the issue where the model of large torpedoes would pass through the ship. Okay, Modif I think that's, a, that's just a visual. That's a total visual fix. Okay, modified the way damage is calculated for armor link modules. Now it will be calculated separately based on each ship's own resistance. This is good. That means the 52% damage coming to the actual uh, arm, the armor link guardian should be able to hold fast. And you're not, you're not, as a super tanky armor guardian, you're not taking the low resist glass cannon ship that's getting hits level of damage which wasn't right it basically made armor link modules useless so this this bug fix was required to really put armor on the board fix an issue where some modules were not taking effect on npc enemies including but not limited to resistance modules shield extenders passive effects of armor plates etc effect on npcs so technically that could be an npc buff more resists proper use of shield extenders and armor plates and that that is our patch right across the board a lot of ship modifications we've seen buffs on your faction battleships uh big nerfs on the interdictors and overall just a a big buff to armor so we're gonna have, i'd love to see how armor is getting into the game if you're planning on running an armor tank ship 
uh, what are you planning on running? And, and have you tried it out yet? How's it working? That's definitely something I got to look into. I fly a few prophecies, so I can consider slapping some armor armor stuff on them now. It's just going to be better right across the board. But uh, thank you for checking out this patch note review. Uh, lots, of, uh, lots of ship balancing. I expect some big moves to happen again next week. Obviously, when you release a patch this big, there's usually feedback, some more adjustments to be made. So I'm excited for that. But stay tuned. I got a lot of ship refitting to do. We're de I'm definitely looking to do um, industrial ships. And I do a ton. I've finally broken out of my little indie mining shell. And I'm doing a lot of PvE. So I got a lot of cool builds to share with you uh, with those. Some, some really great Guardian tanking builds that can do high level anoms when they really almost shouldn't be able to. But until then, you know, stay tuned to catch up to that. Make sure you give the video a like, share it. It helps. I really appreciate it. Of course, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, come join Discord for a 500 million is giveaway. It's discord.gg slash mass TV. And also just get in there and start. Let's talk about fits. We got, a, we got a fits channel. Any suggestions you have for me, things you want to see in there that might not be yet, just let me know as well. You can always DM me. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, smash that subscribe button and stay classy.